Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Tutorlini Test Prep. Today we'll be going over lesson number 17 on how to use Desmos for the digital SAT math. Domain restrictions. Let's get started. Alright, let's look at this first question. Um, I've done questions like this several times on the channel before, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, so, hopefully we see that it says the object is launched from a height of 81 feet. That is an initial height, which for a projectile quadratics problem tells us the y-intercept. y-intercept always have an x of 0, so this is the point 0, 81. And then it also tells us it reaches its maximum height of 225 feet above the ground three seconds after being launched. So time is x, height is y. So this is the point 3, 225. And because it says the word maximum, that tells us that this point is the vertex. So we can label this guy h, comma, k. What you would then do is, and again, I've gone over problems like this before, you would um, come up, you would plug the h and the k in, and you would then plug in the 0, comma, 81 to find a. You can do that on your own. You should come up with this equation negative 16 x minus 3 squared plus 225. And of course, going into the exam, you want to make sure you know vertex form by heart, which I wrote on the board here. So let's go to Desmos and solve the question. OK, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the equation we just came up with. I feel like that was the hardest part, was knowing vertex form and then just kind of translating those sentences to points. So negative 16 x minus 3 squared plus 225. And I see that this does not look very good. So really the first thing I'm going to do is, is, and if I zoom out a ton, it, it just looks really bad. So the first thing I'm going to do is just manually set some bounds. So I know it's going to be in the first quadrant. So why don't we do an x, and then this guy goes to 6.75. So why don't I click on the gear and set the x bounds from like negative 3 to a little bit past um, 6.75. So how about 10? And then the y bound, let's see, it's going to go from 0 to 225. So why don't we go a little bit below 0? and do negative 10, and then a little bit past 225, so 240. Okay, so kind of manually setting those um, kind of bounds makes this picture a lot easier to see. Now, the reason why I'm doing this with you guys is to use a story problem that you're probably familiar with. Again, this is like something being launched or throwing a ball, like again, goes up in the air, comes back down, is what you can do to just look at the first quadrant of this graph is you can restrict the domain and range. So how you do that on Desmos is you put curly brackets at the end. So I'm going to put a left curly bracket and we want x to be 0 or positive. So I'm going to do x is greater than or equal to 0. Um, again, remember guys, in this problem, x is time. So we can't go backwards in time. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Time cannot be negative. It must be zero or positive. x or time is greater than or equal to zero. Now, also, in, in the vast majority of problems like this, when you throw a ball or launch a rocket or something, it, when it comes back down, it's not going to start burrowing its way into the ground. So y can't be negative either. So we can put another curly bracket and once again put y is greater than or equal to 0. And all of a sudden, this whole question becomes a lot easier to solve. Um, so I believe it asked for the time. It says 2 seconds after. So that's an x value. So let's type in x equals 2. And I could just click on it. And we get a height of 209. So the answer for this one would be 209 feet. Now, we don't really have to restrict the y values often. So if you wanted to, for this one, 
you could, you could restrict the domain using what's called a compound inequality. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. See how this guy is 6.75? So we know it has to go from 0 to 6.75. So what you can do is you can just forget about the range entirely and type in 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6.75. And it'll just plot the portion we're interested in and all these relevant points to the problem, the vertex y-intercept and the positive x-intercept become really clear. And our answer, which again is 209 feet. So this one was just to introduce you to the idea. We're going to do two questions now where this kind of restriction with the curly brackets at the end can be really helpful. So let's move on to question two. Okay, so this is actually an official question from the College Board. This is from one of the practice um, PN test, PSAT and MSQT, which is um, very similar to the digital SAT, incredibly similar. Um, so um, we are looking for the maximum value of each of these functions. So I'll make a little table over here, max. And it deliberately tells us x is greater than or equal to 0. OK, so why don't we go back to Desmos and plot this using what we just learned. OK, so first I'm going to type in f of x equals um, 33, 0 0.4. And then if you go and try to type in x plus 3, it's going to like automatically exit out of it. So you either have to put parentheses around it like that. Or um, a cool little trick you can do is you can just write x plus 3 kind of on the ground level, highlight it, and then press the exponent button, shift 6, and it'll put it up there. And then I can press tab to exit that, or the right arrow key. OK, so 33.4 x plus 3. And lots of people can kind of mentally chop off where x is greater than or equal to 0. But some people can't. And honestly, I kind of have trouble with that sometimes, depending on what the domain is. So um, I'm just going to type in x is greater than or equal to 0. And remember, guys, we're looking for the maximum value. OK, so the maximum y value is where it's like highest on the graph. So that is up here. And you see it's, it's at our leftmost endpoint, the bound, which is 0. And you can even, because this one happens to be a y-intercept, you could just click on it. Right, But for later, more challenging questions, I want to make sure you understand the, the function notation. So the leftmost x value, which gives us the max, is 0. So um, we're going to write f of 0. And we get 2.112. So that is the max for f of x. We'll go back to the question in a minute. Let's do g of x first. So g of x is equal to 33, 0 0.16, 0 0.4, x minus 2. OK, now i got to highlight this. And we're going to, again, put a curly bracket. x is greater than or equal to 0. And the green one, you could unhighlight the red one if you want. Not really getting in my way here, so I'll keep it. I've got to zoom out a little bit. Ah, OK, so it seems like it's also decreasing as you go from left to right. So the biggest y value is up here, which is 33. Um, and again, we can find that. Remember, the leftmost x value in this problem might be different for another problem is 0. So we're going to type in g of 0. And we get 33. So we just figured out that the max of function f is 2.112. And the, the max of function g is 33. Okay. So let's go back to the whiteboard now and actually answer the question now that we know that. OK, so as you guys can see, I, I made a little chart, put the max is 2.112 of the first one, and the max of the second one is 33. So now it says, which of the following equations displays as a constant or coefficient? Oh, give me one second. All right, let me see. OK, so displays as a constant or coefficient. 
the maximum value. So all that means is you're going to look for that number that you just found in the equation. So the max of F is 2.112. So I'm going to look in this equation. I see a 33, a 0.4, and a 3. I don't see a 2.112 anywhere. So this guy is out. He does not count. All right, now let's look at the second one. We got a max of 33. Oh, here we go. I see 33, 0 0.16, 0 0.4, and 2, or negative 2. And um, 33 is a constant or coefficient in this equation. So this one does count. So the answer to this question is 2 only, which is B. Let's move on to question 3. OK, so for this one, we want to find a minimum this time of each function. And we are going from 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5. So a little bit more complicated. This one might even be a little bit harder to do in your head without um, you know, understanding how to leverage Desmos. So let's, let's make a, another little kind of column here for the minimum. And now let's go to Desmos and um, type each of these in. OK, so the first one is f of x equals 2, 0 0.8, 4, x minus 4. And I'm going to press Shift 6 on that. And we're going to do curly bracket 1 less than equal x less than equal 5, curly bracket. And um, for this one, I can kind of see that we're looking for a minimum. So the minimum is the bottom most y value. So it's, it's actually um, all the way on the left. So you could actually click and hold down left click and kind of drag this dot all the way to the end. And it'll tell you. But I still encourage you to use the um, function notation because this will round. If you use the function notation, it won't round to three decimal places. You'll, you'll get the exact answer. Um, this one, I think, is the same, but the next one isn't. So we're going from, remember, we're going from 1 to 5. So the leftmost x value for this one um, is 1. So we're going to do f, and the, the lowest point is the leftmost x value. So we're going to do f of 1, and we get 0 0.025. So let's just kind of mental note back on your paper. OK, the min of the first one is 0 0.025. Write that down. And if you want, just to kind of drive this home, we can actually plot that point. So let's do that 1 comma f of 1 and hit label. And I'm going to do that with purple. How about? Great. OK. Now let's do the second one. g of x equals 64, 0 0.3125, 0.5 x plus 1, I'm going to highlight this, shift 6, tab, curly bracket, 1 less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5. And this one looks a little different. This time it seems the minimum is all the way on the right. So over here, if I hold left click and drag, and again, you can unhighlight this one if that's confusing you. And I'm going to make this green. And 0 0.313, that kind of feels like it might be rounded. Why don't we get the exact value? So remember, the lowest point is the rightmost x value. We're going from 1 to 5. So the rightmost x value is 5. So we're going to do g of 5. And we get 0 0.3125. So the minimum of that function is 0 0.3125. And let's once again plot it. So we're going to do 5 comma g of 5. And we can make that, how about blue? And I'll label it. OK, so you can kind of imagine having this picture in front of you makes these problems way, way easier to solve. Once you get that value from your function notation, and you write down the min or max, you are super in business for this question. All right, let's go back to the whiteboard and see what the answer is. OK, so I added the mins to our little chart here. And we are once again 
looking to see where it's displayed as a constant or coefficient. So basically just do you see that number somewhere in the equation? Um, I see a 2, a 0.8, a 4, and a 4. I don't see a 0 0.025. So it seems like Roman numeral 1 is wrong. And for this one, I see a 64.3125, a 0.5, and a 1. So 0.3125 was the min that we got. So I think this one is correct. So once again, just coincidentally, I think the answer to this one is 2 only. All right, let's do some final thoughts. So as you guys can kind of imagine, this is really just one or two problem types. There could absolutely be other problem types, either story problems, different types of story problems, or different types of graphs where they ask you to restrict the domain. So make sure you keep this um, tool in your back pocket just in case you come across a question like this, because as you can see, it makes some of them much, much easier. Okay, that completes the lesson. Please like and subscribe for more digital SAT math content. If you're interested in my tutoring services, the link to my website will be in the description. I tutor all sections of the SAT and all math subjects from about seventh grade to AP slash early college level. Thanks for stopping by and good luck studying.